to the exciting exciting um, like program that we prepared for you and before I start um, everybody is muted now but just keep uh, keep in mind to mute you when you're not speaking and it would be great if everybody turns on their camera now which is almost the case just to get this feeling that we're actually in a room together because of course it's very sad that you can't be here but at least when we see our faces it feels more like we're talking to each other and um, I just wanted to say that the topic as you said uh, as you read is everything about audiences today and I'm very happy that you will get a little bit of um, like insights to our German museumscape but also some insights to like some best practice examples about digital audiences and uh, visitors research so you can look forward to that um, but before I'd like to give the floor to um, Julia our general secretary who will I guess a lot of you know to say uh, hello to us Hello, everybody. Can you hear me well? Yes, I see a lot of nodding heads. That's a good sign. Yeah, uh, also from my side, a warm welcome uh, to the digital <laughs> study visit in Germany. I think uh, we've uh, just made up a new format that hasn't existed yet in the uh, wonderful world of digital uh, conference formats. So this is the last and final month of the Bee Museum project uh, that we from Nemo have been a part of for more than two and a half years. And um, as Senia was already saying, we're happily inviting you to join us digitally to a, th a tour through German museums, showing you some of the most encouraging and also forward-looking initiatives regarding work with different audiences and also with different resources, smaller museums, larger museums. Uh, I'd say that despite the fact that um, we, it would have been amazing to meet in person and it would have been amazing to meet people and places, but a clear advantage of this digital study visit is that you get to see initiatives from all over Europe, um, uh, all over Germany, not only Berlin, uh, we are starting in Berlin, uh, but then uh, we are going to a uh, network of local museums in southern Germany. We're going back north to Lübeck. We're ending with a digital visit at the Museum Ludwig in Cologne. So I think no one can get such a good overview of uh, museums from all over Germany in two and a half hours. So let's see the positive side of that. Yeah, I'm really happy with what we achieved with the Bee Museum project um, during the past years, despite a global pandemic. Uh, I think we have built bridges, we have facilitated exchange and, uh, and new knowledge and uh, experiences, and hopefully we have encouraged some future cooperation. Because this is, I think, the original purpose of NEMO. Uh, as a network by and for museums. And if we have contributed just a little bit uh, to a strong and growing global network of museums, then I think we've reached our goal. Uh, and yeah, just before David will give an overview of the German museums and the German museum landscape, I would quickly like to introduce or remind you of what NEMO is. Uh, I think most of you have heard from us or have uh, seen a presentation, so I'll just quickly, quickly give you an introduction to uh, the main aspects of the network. We were founded in 1992, that is 30 years ago, and uh, this year we are actually celebrating our 30th birthday. Um, so we were founded in 1992, and uh, 1992 was the year when the Maastricht Treaty came around, which was the first EU treaty that included culture and its policies. And back then the museums thought that they needed a spokesperson towards European policymakers, European institutions such as the Commission and the Parliament, and so they created NEMO. And on the other hand, in 1992, uh, the museum community was really far from being connected across borders. So Nemo took up the task to building bridges and creating the first communication channels between the different organizations 
and museums in Europe to grow together. And that included literally to go through telephone books and find the right uh, contact of museums in uh, other countries. Today, we are 130 members in 40 countries in Europe. And that might tell you that uh, we are reaching far beyond EU borders, but go within uh, the borders of the Council of Europe, 47 countries in total. Among them, we have uh, national, national museum umbrellas, uh, other networks of museums and uh, museums that are interested in European cooperation and training. And we also have businesses and research institutions that are offering small services to museums. The idea behind it is to really reflect what we call a European museum ecosystem to really look at all aspects of uh, museum work, including services, for example. Well, in uh, Georgia, we have one member that represented with Lana, who looks very pretty today, uh, from the Georgia, Muse uh, Georgia Museums Association, and uh, two members in Azerbaijan. We sincerely hope that um, we have some more members in the future from the Caucasus region, so uh, please don't hesitate and apply for membership with us. Just to give you a short idea of our main activities, uh, we advocate for museums vis-a-vis -vis policymakers. That's our uh, main, in, say, action as a political body. Then we do initiate and support international cooperation between museums, which means that we basically help museums to work at European level and to attract European funding. We act as information platform uh, to share best practices and uh, information. And we offer capacity building to museum professionals in Europe on all matters and levels of museum work. Most of our offers are actually free uh, to all museum professionals, such as the webinars that we organize regularly, while others are free uh, only to our members. But in, generally, uh, in general, the idea is to really um, be relevant and offer the services uh, to as many museum professionals as possible. Yeah, and uh, just before I'm giving back the floor to Xenia, I wanted to invite you to uh, our next European Museum Conference in person uh, in Lule, which is in southern Portugal, uh, from 9 to 11 October, where we will discuss how museums can become more innovative, more agile, and flexible in a fast-changing and challenging world. Uh, and as I was saying, we will also celebrate Nemo turning 30 years, so we would love to do that with you. So thank you very much, and now uh, enjoy your digital study visit. Thank you, Yuvadia. Also for the quick like introduction to what Nemo does, it's always good to hear. Um, so the next presentation is by David, as Julia already said, David Viyum, who also might have, some of you might know. Um, David is not only a chairman uh, for NEMO, for the board of NEMO, but he's also the um, managing director of the German Museum Association. This is our logo uh, that you see right now. And he will uh, give us an introduction to the German museumscape, what our needs are currently, what uh, makes it special, um, yeah, and uh, what challenges we are uh, facing. So, uh, David, thank you for being here um, in this double role. Uh, you may start. Thank you, Xenia, and thank you, uh, Julia, also for having organized this um, this study visit, this online study visit, is uh, the first time <laughs> I do that, but it's not the first time uh, I'm contributing to um, uh, to be museumer. I have uh, uh, I had the, the 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 great opportunity. You see that uh, picture to uh, to uh, have held a workshop, a three days workshop, not like today, just ten minutes or. 15 minutes uh, presentation, but a three day workshop uh, in Bilisi with uh, your uh, colleagues uh, from, uh, from an former sessions uh, from Georgia, Armenia, and, uh, and Azerbaijan. It was uh, in December 2019 about uh, mission, visions, and values. 
um, in the uh, museum sectors. That is a picture of a, of a lively uh, workshop session. If you are interested in, uh, in having some uh, an, an overview about um, about the, the the question we raised in this time uh, about uh, mission, vision, and values. You find the, the webinar I gave uh, a couple of weeks after uh, is uh, online on the website of of Nemo. Okay, so that was uh, that was my with my hat uh, Nemo because as uh, Xenia said, I'm the chair of the uh, network of European museum organization. But now I take the hat of the German Museum Association because I'm the director of the German Museum Association. And I would like to give you an overview about the museum sector in Germany with two. Um, to, to, to chapter, short chapter. The first is the German Museum Landscape in general and the German Museum Association as a part of this uh, important landscape um, in, uh, in Germany. So German Museum Landscape uh, geographically is like that. Germany is important to see it's not one, only one country, one state, it's, a, it's, it's 16 uh, political states together and, uh, and we are uh, currently here in one of these states, the Berlin states, I, I am currently there. And some, uh, some question or just some, some, some data about, uh, about uh, the, the German museum landscape with the question, how many museum uh, Germany has? Do, do you have an idea? Do you want just to, to open your microphone to say a number? Just try. Lana, do you want to, uh, to begin? <laughs> I would say a thousand. Another? <laughs> Another voice, thank you. Okay, we have a little bit more, but before we begin to count uh, the museums in, uh, in Germany, we have, uh, we have extra an institute for museum research that counts museum every year. Uh, we have to decide what, we have to define what is a museum, you know. Sorry, <laughs> you, you are listening to everything that my computer said, uh, you have to listen to that. Uh, so that is the de de definition, you know, the new definition of ICOM, uh, it's uh, something like, like that, that will be uh, presented in, um, and voted in, in Prague uh, in, in August, that could have a certain uh, change in the numbers of museums in Germany, but I give you the number of 2018, and it's uh, uh, quite the same number today, uh, it's uh, 6,741 museums, yes, it's a little, little bit more than 1,000, and we count uh, uh, on top 500 exhibition places, so like museum but without, uh, uh, without collections, and we have at the end uh, more than 7,200 museum institutions in Germany, so it's a, the largest uh, museum sector, but it's also one of the larger country in Europe. So it's um, it's um, uh, it's obvious. Um, 2019, just as an example, before the the, the, the COVID crisis, these 6,741 museums had organized uh, eight more than 8,000 exhibitions and had uh, counted uh, 100 million visits. So you see the, 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 um, the change in the visit numbers in the museum sector. We have always between 111 million uh, to a little bit more, 120 million uh, visit. I don't have the, uh, the or I, I don't show you the last numbers of last years because they are, of course, not very high. But in general, you, you, we, we have 110 million visits every, every year. Another question is not only number of visits, but how many visitors uh, the German museum uh, has. Of course, we don't know the number of visitors. We know only the number of visits, but we don't know how much, how many time a visitor uh, in the museum. We have an overview about that 
because of a survey uh, done 2017 by the European Commission who have asked and aggregated some, uh, some uh, uh, data about the percentage of the population which visits at least one museum a year. And we have in Germany, so 56% of the population says, so we don't know if it's exactly the, 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 the real number, but 56% of the population in Germany says they visit a museum uh, once a year. So it's, it's an average in, in, in Europe. You have here only the, 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 uh, uh, the country of the European, uh, uh, of the European Union. Uh, some countries have much more uh, visitors. 80% uh, of the population in Sweden, for example, but some other countries have much uh, less. Other question, which types of collection the museum, the German museum um, uh, collects and, um, and exhibits? Uh, you see here an overview. Uh, half of the museums, 33.9%, uh, are regional and local museums. So uh, quite half. Only 10%, you know, you see that uh, uh, above 10.6 uh, museums are art museums. Only 10% of the museums in Germany are art museums. Sometimes it's important to, to say that or, or, or uh, uh, or to repeat it because uh, some people working in the media or the politician, they always say museum are art museum. No, only 10% in Germany. It's not only in Germany. I think it's the same uh, in, uh, in the Caucasian uh, region. And, uh, and the rest are different uh, art, different kind of uh, uh, nature museum, technique museum. So. But the most important thing to see here Half of the museum are uh, local museum and 10% are art museum. Another question is the size of the museum. So the size of the museum, which size exactly is the number of collection of objects, the number of, uh, of um, uh, visitors or the number of the uh, the, 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 the size, the, 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 quad, uh, the uh, square meters of the museum. We don't have all this information in Germany. I just show, can show you these, um, these data from the G uh, German Institute for Museum Research. Uh, more than 50%, 56% of the museums in Germany have uh, less than 5,000 visitors. So there are these local museums we so uh, before and other museums. So more than more than half of the museum in Germany are very small museums, um, and um, and uh, and not uh, and only zero point four percent of the museum have more than half a million of visitors. And this, of course, the known museum from Berlin, for example, Pergamon Museum, or all the big the big names. But it's only. 0.5%. The legal status that is interesting to see that 50% of the German museum are public institution and the other half are private organization like association or foundation and only 4% are, are public private partnerships. It doesn't mean that private organization are not uh, receiving uh, public money. Uh, it's exactly the the contrary, they were quite 100% of the museum in Germany becomes uh, uh, public funding, but 50% are private organization. And last uh, data or last, in, last information about the, the German museum sector in general is this picture of the 16 countries in, um, in the uh, German um, uh, law. Um, culture is not um, the um, responsibility of the Republic, of the, of the, 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 the German state, but of the 16 regional states. Of course, uh, on national level, there are some organizations working at the cultural uh, level, like the German Museum Association, or we have some kinds of, um, of a cultural ministry, 
but uh, but the most money and the most uh, all the the, the, the most um, decisions taken uh, about the museum or the cultural policy are uh, taken on regional and city level. Okay, and, and now just some words about the German Museum Association, because we are an important part of this uh, museum sector. The German Museum Association is an important part also historically, because we have uh, been uh, founded 1917. It means before the German, uh, the, the modern German Republic have been founded. And, uh, and before uh, uh, the, the, the main, um, the current political organization that we have uh, was, uh, was, was founded. So we, we are one of the oldest um, cultural network uh, in, uh, in Europe. And what we do, we do three things like quite every association in the world even if you are, if you have an association, I don't know, for chemical industry or for automobile, uh, it's we we, we, we do three things on half of the sector: advocacy, networks, and guidelines. I give you just one example of what we do in these three chapters. We do a lot of things, of course, but just to have uh, to give you an uh, an idea about advocacy. Uh, our main um, um, our main event where uh, the museum sector speaks on behalf of museum uh, to, the, to the visitors personally is the International Museum Day. We, are, uh, we uh, coordinate the work of all the museums in, in Germany um, for, for this event once a year. Xenia Weber uh, can do a lot of things and she has also, she's working also for the German Museum Association as is responsible for this coordination. And another uh, way to, to speak on behalf of the museum sector is our connection to different ministries. You see here the four ministries with, uh, with we have a uh, uh, four ministry uh, we have uh, which with which we have uh, um, official connection. Of course, the um, cultural ministry, the uh, ministry, uh, the um, um, foreign affairs ministry, and two other ministry uh, about technology, economy, and um, and one ministry uh, about um, uh, education and and research. When we have a connection, it means that sometimes we got money for our job, uh, but, uh, but it's not the most important thing. The most important thing because of our, our long history and because of the fact that we are representing the museum sector, we are uh, counseling these ministries when they have a question about or an idea about the museum sectors. About the networks, our main import the, our, our main uh, uh, offer in networking is uh, the organization of the biggest, the largest museum conference uh, in Germany with uh, between 800 and 250 uh, participants once a year, but a big conference with, uh, 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 it lasts four days with a lot of, uh, of, of session this year, we had uh, 80, um, speakers, uh, 13 different sessions and uh, on, on different places in a region in Germany. The other uh, networks we are offering to our member are 15 permanent working groups. They have uh, between um, 50 and 250 members, also the members of the German Museum Association uh, can be also members of these sub-organization. And uh, these organizations are um, um, committed to uh, a subject or a museum uh, um, uh, museum type. So we have behalf of uh, of these uh, permanent working groups 
uh, for example, for archaeological museums or for nature, uh, natural history museums. But other uh, subjects like uh, security, like migration, uh, like uh, um, uh, exhibition are also in this group. And the, 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 the members, once a year, can uh, um, organize themselves and ask the other members during the general assembly if we should uh, create a new permanent working group. They organize two. They organize two conferences a year, and uh, and publish a lot of um, of studies or recommendations. And the last but not least <laughs> network we we offer or we recommend to all our members is of course the uh, network of European museum organizations. And last point about the guidelines, just a couple of, uh, of, uh, of ideas what we are uh, making. We are, organize, uh, we are publishing a lot of uh, recommendation, recommendations um, for museums. You see here uh, an overview of, of some publications, or paper publication, but the most important thing is not the recommendation at the end what you find in these uh, documents. Some documents are available in, German, uh, in, uh, in English. The most important thing is the process to create this recommendation because in every uh, short uh, publication um, you have not one author, you have at least 50. And that is the most important. These 50 people have to work together, to write together. And of course, they are also uh, at the end, though, uh, like ambassadors of the content of this publication. And it's why we can have an impact uh, with these different publications or publication about uh, uh, coloniza colonization, publication about uh, how to, uh, we are uh, preparing now on a publication about how to digitalize uh, collections. And one project that is, or one subject that is very important for, for us for the next years is uh, sustainability. Um, but I don't want to speak about uh, in, in details about, uh, about that, but we have uh, a, a project uh, with also now we have 70 people working on the project. Uh, two years. At the end, we are going to to make a proposal to the uh, to, to the politic and the administration to have a registration uh, uh, process for sustainable museum in Germany. And and to for the end of this presentation, just a couple of information about. Our association, we have uh, more than 3,400 members. We have financial resources of, in general, 2.2 million every year. And we have 18 employees for 11 full-time um, full employees. And um, that is the, the one of, we have three, uh, three uh, um, offices, but the most beautiful office is, is, is in German in Berlin is in this uh, is in nice house that you can you, you could have visited today, but we make an online uh, visit. Okay, that's everything what I wanted to to show you. I don't know if we have time or if we have time for questions or for um, um, for comments. Yes, definitely. But first of all, thank you very much, David, uh, for this very nice insight um, to our museumscape. I think it's um, very depth. You went into the depth of uh, our challenges and also especially the, um, the statistics you've shown about the audiences and how many people go into big and the small museums. I think that's something we can discuss together. Um, you are more than welcome to first turn on your camera, of course, uh, if that's not the case yet. Um, and also ask questions, like general questions to David. Um, but maybe you also want to share um, 
because it's not only about talking to you and presenting, but we do uh, it would be great if we have some interaction and get to know each other on this level. So you're more than welcome to share how it is in your country. How do you feel? How dif different it is with the audience groups? Um, yeah, Julia, you want to do to go first? Uh, I don't have a question for David because I know everything about you. <laughs> uh, but I do have a question for um, our participants in, uh, in far away. And that is whether you know how many museums are there in, in Georgia or in Armenia or in Azerbaijan? Do you have estimate numbers just to get an idea of how large the museum community is? Yeah, that might be interesting. We have uh, 330 in Georgia. Hello, can I say? Yeah, of course. So recently we had uh, within the BIM Museum where we had the research on museum communication and part of the research, I mean, the indirect job of ours was to get in, uh, to get the whole list of Georgian museums to contact them and then send the surveys. So uh, we found out that there are 330 active museums in Georgia. So we have like the exact number. That's great. Is anybody here from Azerbaijan who can share a number maybe? So it's coming in. Okay. Good day everyone. Uh, my name is Firahnaz. I'm from the Carpet Museum Baku. I cannot say the exact number, but I know that it's about 300 in, in all Azerbaijan, including house museums and large museums, of course. Right. Hello. Ani is here. Can you say how many museums are in your country? Uh, 120 museums in Armenia we have. Okay, perfect. So we have a good overview now. Do you have any other questions or things you want to share with the group? Do you have like a similar... Um, like difference between art and also regional museums, like David proposed. You can also just shake your head if you don't want to say it. Okay. I just want to check, maybe I have missed the presentation because just there were people walking around in the room. So David said, uh, culture is not priority for the Republic. Was it right? Um, when the federal state have been um, created 1946 uh, uh, and 1949 after uh, as a real uh, in, in the, in the uh, current form, it was clearly decided that culture uh, would be in uh, uh, the responsibility of the mem so of the of the. Uh, um, part of the federal state, so the 16 regional, the lender. And, um, and now, of course, there are some important players on national level, but, uh, and, and it makes the cu cultural work very, very complicated in Germany. Uh, if you really want to have a, a politician who can have an impact on the cultural sector or which, which can, or an organization who have a lot of, of money to create, to build new institutions, etc. You cannot find them on national level. You have to go on regional level. That is the, the, uh, the most, the specific, one of the specificity of the uh, German cultural organization. Uh, of course, they work together. Of course, we have a ministry, but the ministry, the cultural ministry, is one of the smallest ministries. It's officially, it's not a ministry uh, in, in, in Germany. It's just a, a person who is in charge of culture of national level, just because it's important to show that culture is not the responsibility, uh, the first responsibility for culture is not on national level. That's very, very special. Um, we can actually continue with uh, the first best practice example that we offer you today. Um, 
we have two presentations planned um, and then in the evening there will be a little study visit like we're going in the museum digitally of course so but first of all i will introduce to you um, christopher Villa, who is here already and he studied uh, business administration it management and museum education which is like an amazing combination <laughs> And you will see that it will pay off in this project. Um, he has a lot of experience in project and process uh, managing in various government institutions, but he's also uh, the founder and coordinator of a network that is called Agile Cultures, sorry, uh, which tries to implement new structures and agile methods in cultural uh, organizations, which is also very important. Um, he's the head of a museum in Eckling, a small town museum in southern Bavaria. And he will present a project to us, which is called Kein Rembrandt, No Rembrandt. And yeah, I'm very excited to hear uh, Christopher now. Uh, the stage is yours. Well, thank you so much. I hope everybody's doing well. I hope you can hear me. I'll try to share my screen. And we'll get this on the road. I hope you all can see my screen. I'll try to see. I'll see you all nodding your yes. heads. <laughs> so that must that must be a good thing. Yeah. Um. In German, kein Rembrandt loosely translates to no Rembrandt. Um. Basically, a small museum network community of practice. Um what we call it well we'll talk about the name a little bit later um what a coincidence i've brought along the same numbers and statistics like david <laughs> it um uh, to highlight it what's so important to us uh, the, the main important thing is that you have to know what you already know is that historical city and township museums uh, represent about 43.5%, but we only combine about 13.5% of all the museum's visits, which is, well, let's just say it's not a balanced scale in any way. And um, so we set out to do what well, we kind of ask ourselves the questions with all these small museums, everybody's, um, let's put it plainly of uh, some of them fighting to survive some um trying to uh, work to reduce the future and we kind of thought well what connects all of us well we all have a huge amount of everyday tasks the average full-time positions at the museums in our project in our network is about 1.5 so one person to run the museum and do all the chores, uh, all the tasks, of course, supported by volunteers, but that also takes time. Um, limited resources, not just financially, but especially time and personnel resources, um, especially during the pandemic through COVID-19, uh, we saw a changing in the museum visitors and a big need for everybody to push forward the digital transformation of our institutions, which we'll talk a, a little bit about that later. And the big question above all of that is always, where do I start? Uh, especially in a small museum, because like everything is super important. And um, we kind of came up with the idea, let's create a network. Let's start thinking about a network, not just as a platform to exchange ideas, to exchange experiences, but of course, the knowledge transfer part, but also the pooling of resources. resources. And in this case, it's not just personnel and time, it's also money. Um, generating synergies, of course, and also sharing platforms in our case especially digital platforms and so we set out with the idea of uh, creating this project this network and by the title of no rembrandt why no rembrandt it's pretty simple 
all these small city township museums, the one thing we don't have, we don't have objects of a national importance. We have everyday culture pro uh, objects and stories to tell, but none of us has a Rembrandt actually. And so uh, we set out and we actually applied for grant money. And we got grant money here on the bottom right. You basically can see it. We received a grant by the uh, um, F uh, Federal Foundation of the uh, um, uh, State, it, uh, Cultural State Foundation, and um, my small museum and stuff in Bavaria, we handed in the, uh, we applied for the grant and we went out and set out to find people who uh, are like-minded, who wanted to participate and just uh, splurge and share the money. So what we did is, um, right now, we started off with, uh, see now I, I have to, I lost count of it. <laughs> we started out with six museums and a museum network. The network of Baggage Museum, it's a part it's a country port in North Rhine-Westphalia, um, which consists of about 22 um, local volunteer nonprofit museums, which means they have nobody working there full time. Uh, so we're spread across almost every part of North, uh, about Germany. So from west to east, south to north. Well, we could use somebody way up from way up north, but well, we're we're expanding. So uh, we set out with these uh, six museums plus the network. And uh, what did we do? Well, over the period of the last 10 months, uh, we had weekly meetings. We drafted a digital community strategy for the network. Uh, we transferred knowledge, we generated ideas, but most importantly, we used the money to invite speakers, experts, in instructors, consultants on the one thing that we all have in common. For small museums, we have a, it's a huge responsibility to make the digital turn to, you know, leave the local circle of audience of how do we connect to the world? How do we connect to younger generations for, for for them, basically, um, digital worlds are part of life. It's natural. And um, so we invited speakers, expert, experts, instructors. And every month we had a, um, a full day of workshop and focus on digital transformation and audience development. Sometimes it would just say, how to, how do I actually make a good Instagram post? How, what do I actually have to keep in mind when I want to kick off a campaign, a social media campaign? How do I reach out to specific audiences like bloggers, like um, tourists and, and, and up to how can we measure it? What can we do to uh, when it comes to uh, to search engine optimization and stuff like that? Up to the part, what are we doing now? Well, like I said in the beginning, we actually thought about what can we share except knowledge, time, resources, money-wise. Well, we kind of figured out that because as most of the small museums are so tightly budgeted when it comes to personal resources and one person, well, as you all know, you have your, uh, some things you're very good at, some things, well, you don't like it so much, maybe you're not so good at, um, but somebody else is. So the next thing is not every museum is represented on social media or even has its own uh, web page, homepage. So we actually came up with the idea. We implemented a Twitter account, an Instagram account, and a Facebook account. And right now we're preparing the launch of the YouTube, LinkedIn, and TikTok account from No Rembrandt. And on there, every week, we hand off the account to a different person in the network. And they, a, they post their objects, which we all decide on. 
in advance. You know, we we every every week we have a meeting. We plan posts. We plan campaigns. Um, also do knowledge transfer. Um, we have a shared homepage, a web page, and and blog. And uh, over the next year, over the next years, um, we're gonna have certain block campaigns which focus around four major categories which are we, we we decided on dressing tasting collecting and moving because the adjectives well because it comes back to what people are doing um so what where where again where do we come from and what do we believe is going to be the future and it's going to be the improvements for all of us in that network. Well, the big thing is the digital turn, the digital transformation and audiences. Well, the past or, well, the past up until, let's say, a couple of months ago was uh, our museums in the network, small museums, mainly gathered to local audiences. Even, you know, in the analog world. Um, that every museum is on every social media platform ha or some of them don't even have their own web page. There's somewhere on the city township uh, web page that they got like, they got one sub page and that's it. You can put a picture on it, a contact number, and maybe two or three sentences. Um, what do we predict as the future? Well, it's like, let me translate like this. Social media is a party. Everybody's invited. You go to the party and you start the conversation with everybody that's at the party. But first, you have to be at the party. So we kind of figured, let's share platforms. Let's take the pressure off each individual to have to put out postings every second day of the week, because again, there's the problem of time resources about uh, who's good uh, on, on what topic and everything. So let's pull the resources and everything. Um, let's expand from just local audiences. It's, first of all, let's expand towards all the local audiences that we already have um, because we've got similar topics. For example, like traditional German clothing costumes, um, which vary from region to region, but um, it's a similarity in there. And also, let's gather to, towards a digital audience. Um, also, with small museums, most of the time, you have supports by volunteers. These volunteers are very knowledgeable. They Sometimes they're an expert on a very small, tiny theme. Um, they're really good at it. Um, so why not? And they're all over the country, actually, not just locally. So connect and encourage citizen science. Um, when we start off uh, our first block campaign, and we just don't want other institutions writing articles, we want to invite people, regular people out there to participate, to bring in their and share their knowledge. Um, we're expanding. Uh, actually, we've, we, our homepage and blog went live on the International Museums Day. And since then, uh, I already had four Zoom meetings with interested museums. So we're, if that if we keep growing at that rate, uh, we're going to have to talk about finances again with somebody <laughs> up higher up. Um, and, and this is an ongoing process. Um, we're having workshops on audience measurement and development because we believe and we know everybody each on his own we don't have the time the money or the resources to dive into every topic especially these time consuming topics so we we put it on a a network level and um we pull the money, and from that money, we invest the money into um, workshops, experts, consultants to build knowledge, and also to uh, 
help everybody advance. So this is that's the whole idea behind it. This is how we started. Like I said, we went we went live about not even not even a month ago we went live. But before that was a period of, of ten months that we worked on this and we're, we keep working at it. And um, I was told to keep it short, sweet and short, so I did that. Um, so we could uh, have a Q&A and just throw the ball around. So I'll Perfect. stop the screen sharing. Very sweet, this word. Perfect. Thank you so much. I'm so happy that you're here today and share this um, this perspective, especially and representing this uh, regional museums that we've been talking about. Um, and I think it also shows that working together and not only sharing the knowledge, also resources that you said is like the perfect way to go. And I'm very help everybody feels inspired by this too. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. Uh, again, feel free to comment, ask questions. Um, we already, I know, if, if you don't have immediate question, I'll just throw some questions your way, if that's fine. <laughs> yeah. I always have a question. <laughs> that's good. Possibly. Um, because thanks, first of all, for, for the presentation. It was really interesting, and I think it's so important to showcase those small examples of how small museums can actually do something while being occupied with everything else uh, in, in one person. Um, how, how much do you think that initiative is scalable? It, because now you're, how, how many are you currently? Well, now we're, we're well, six institutions plus a network of 22 yeah. institutions, but they have a, they have a coordinator which um, makes sure they all get the appointments mm -hmm. and um, yeah. And I, I was just asking myself because like to a certain extent you can always do that like on mm. the side, but yeah. the, the bigger it grows, the more there is a need for like some kind of structured coordination. So I was, uh, I was thinking whether this is a, okay, we keep it to the, to this limited amount of people and mm. we have it, uh, small and sweet <laughs> or is is the idea to grow and and then get some kind of financial support as you would just mm. um, well i think right at the moment or you know our biggest goal is to keep going to actually you know keep 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 doing in you know letting it run so we can we can gain the experience but um yeah scale or size is, is a big question and um uh i venture once we hit about uh 30 institutions uh we really have to talk about, about um, how much time does every institution invest into that network are they willing to let's say have a person commit a, a certain percentage of their time work within the network or can we find a financing partner a grant partner uh, which will you know um, finance a coordinator or something um, so yeah that is uh, that is st still a big question um, right now oh since we're still you know in you know, experiencing doing things and what we have experienced is that so far, um, all the people we have in bo on board uh, have the support of their cities, of their mayors, or whoever, um, of their association who owns the museum to commit a certain percentage of their time, not just thinking about a, a limited amount of time project-wise, but for the next years to come. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, right now, yes, it's working. Um, when we reach a certain size, um, 
we're going to have to answer that question. Um, and in fact, we're already talking about uh, about that question to uh, to financing partners, uh, what we could actually implement. Thanks. Yeah. I have a question too, like uh, cons uh, kind of connects to Julia's mm -hmm. one. Um, considering that you're growing and growing, um, is there any other like thing you don't like? Are you not taking some museums, or is there really just a criteria well, we to not have a Rembrandt? <laughs> <laughs> well, we kind of. Uh, mainly focused on a uh, small city and township or uh, small European ethnology museums because we kind of, well, because it's it's so typical for a museum landscape. You have it in almost every town. Um, we have a lot of similarities. Um, to be quite honest with you, um, we had talked about it in the past. For example, what what, what are we going to do when a art museum is going to come and it's going to be like, well, I want to, you know, join the network. Um, or let me put it in a, in a different perspective, a little bit closer. What constitutes a small museum? Good question. Um, I would, you know, well, looking to David it and, and if I, you know, being mean, I would throw the question his way and be like, "What what does constitute a small museum?" It's it, it's a it's a difficult question. Um, right now, we're focused on the city and township museums because we think there's a um, there's a lot of potential, uh, high uh, similarities between them, um, and. Right now, it's just a case by case decision. Yeah, yeah I mean, it makes sense too. Yeah. And it's all in kind of the same area of uh, North Bavaria, and or is it? Are you spreading? Well, out? no, we we actually we got um, we got um, we got we got Bavaria, we've got uh, Baden Württemberg, we got Thuring, we've oh, got okay. uh, so you can't uh, not Rhine yeah, so we're, we're just. <laughs> Yeah, we're just, just um, and uh, we also got, um, <coughs> basically, we've got two associates that are um, that, uh, kind of say, um, yeah, we we want to cooperate with you, um, but we already got all the platforms and this and that. Um, but we can see working together with you on certain campaigns uh, because we share the same topics because we share the same problems. For example, uh, a lot of these small township or city museums uh, got created at the beginning, well, at the turning of the century between the 19th and 20th century. And then um, through uh, local associations, historical associations, and then just growing, growing, growing. And uh, so we all face the same problems with our collections, which are sometimes just uh, accumulations of different things with not really a story um, recorded, or especially a lot of objects that got transferred to the museum during the time of National Socialism in the 1930s and 40s that actually uh, uh, still have to be checked on their provinces and stuff like that. I'm trying. Okay, it just I just looking into the chat. What uh, Mariam wrote? Yeah, lack of human resources. Is, is you don't have anybody hired. To come communications. Yeah, and you know, other staff members doubling up in these functions, and you know, that's the real question. And um, um, you work one hundred percent, and then it becomes a habit of working one hundred and twenty percent, one hundred and thirty. Um, is that really um, a? Um, should that really be the operating state of it, or can we find ways to support each other and help out? Yeah.
Well, then I'll just throw the question the other way. Um, and we just heard from David and I, I, I had the numbers in my presentation again as well, that we actually have a lot of small museums in, in, in Germany, small historical museums. Um, I, don't, I don't know, how is it in, in your country? Especially the small volunteer run museums. Is that something you have? Is that, is that something that's even encouraged? Um, by the state, or does it all accumulate, accumulate and focus on the more of a region and state level? Maybe someone from Georgia and what el who else do we have? I think Georgia and Azerbaijan, right? Armenia too. Oh, and Armenia too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the screen, but uh, it's it's hard to see. Maybe to can can each each of uh, you get, give an answer. You know what? Even if you don't have an exact answer, it's just to get an idea of of how the landscape is structured. You know whether there is small museums, whether every museum is uh, funded by the ministry and and under the umbrella of the ministry. Whether you have volunteer run museums. Uh, of which we have a lot. Um, um, is that a thing? Yes. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Aymur and I'm from the Azerbaijan National Carpet Museum. Yes, in our country we have different sponsored museums, like under the, most of them, of course, under the umbrella of the uh, Ministry of Culture. But we also have uh, museums which are under the umbrella of the uh, Heydar Ali Foundation. It's a non-private, non-governmental organization. And we also have a private museum. Museums is such as the Museum of Modern Art uh, and Yara. It's a special organization which are works or um, modern, uh, especially Yara. It's uh, the work most for the modern, in the field of modern art, it's like a gallery uh, and they have permanent and temporary exhibitions. And we also have a small private museums, uh, which uh, they uh, open just newly. They opened, uh, one of them was open in last year or something, it, last year, yes, it was open last year and it's in one of the suburbs of Baku. And uh, it's a very small uh, one, you know, Awesome, thank you. Hello again. Uh, in Georgia, we have the similar situation as in Azerbaijan. We have many museums that work under the Ministry of Culture in the regions and uh, in rural areas, I mean, and in the capital city uh, as well. And we have also private museums, very large private museums and small museums that are run by small teams, like my museum, Tbilisi Photography and Multimedia Museum. We work in a really small team, but we managed to have the decent communication strategy and to work on this direction very, like, um, to see the meaning in this type of work, I mean, thank you. I'm just come back. wondering, uh, hello everyone, thank you for the presentation. Uh, sorry, I cannot switch the camera right now, but uh, I just want to ask, you about the network, how you started, I mean, um, how you managed to invite the different museums in this networking system, uh, because at the beginning, is very tricky sometimes how you what was the um, how I can say the point of view or the strategy how you unite the uh, different museums in the network yeah the be very uh, beginning yeah Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, basically, in the beginning, it was two museums. Um, it was my museum and the one in Weibling. Thing. And um, then we more or less just called museums. Of course, we called some of them, some museums that we knew, that we knew had a, uh, that were like-minded, uh, that shared a mindset. Um, but we also called uh, museums that we didn't have a personal connection to and uh, we sat down first of all we sat down with everybody with uh, with each individually and uh, talked about it and also emphasized on that uh, 
that we wanted not just to, you know, find and then work and exchange knowledge or ideas, but actually, you know, work together in a different way. And um, we, we had museums that said, um, no, not really. Um, we kind of think of the others more as competitors. So uh, we like to keep our uh, resources to ourselves. Um, that's okay, you know, to each his own. And um, after that, we invited everybody to to a to a big meeting with everybody on board, and um, sat down and said, "Well, um, if we want to do this together, what's important to you, and what are your experiences?" And that's how we and we wrote all of that down, and that's how we structured it. And uh, we did lose uh, we we actually did lose uh, two museums. In on that way within those ten months, because uh, one museum actually um, the um, the director left, changed uh, positions to to a very big museum, and the small museum, well, or the new director said, well, um, I'm kind of, kind of flooded with you know starting a new job, finding my way. I don't have the time to do it and another the other museum that we lost is uh they actually said well um we kind of didn't realize we had to invest really have to invest time into this and um so um they they more or less uh left or said well once we got our personal resources figured out again we would like to come back yeah Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Okay, I think we got two minutes until the break. We got two minutes left until it's break time. I don't want to cut anybody's break sh uh, short, so I'll just as maybe we can do like a raise of hands or something. Um, like I said, within small museums in Germany, actually the topic of the digital transformation, digital turn, is actually still a very big one, which uh, considered day and age is uh, maybe surprising. But it's the way it is. So um, I don't know how it is in your country, if that's still one of the hot topics there, a uh, digital turn, digital audience, and their development. So I don't know if we, if, if you say this is like one of the three hot topics still at our museum association meetings, get togethers. I don't know, just raise your hands and we'll have a short overview of that. Sorry, good question. Yeah, the question would be is uh, the digital turn and digital audience is one of the three hot topics uh, within museums in your country. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Great. That was very energizing for the end. Now we can go into the break and freshen up a little bit. Um, Thank you so much for joining. Maybe talking about uh, being digital, I brought a little uh, digital uh, uh, <clears throat> um, kind of working together. And I would ask you to uh, open that uh, link and uh, maybe you can um, answer the first question uh, during the break or after that. And um, I, thinking about um, um, our audience, I think it would be nice to hear what kind of museum you're in and what uh, the, the biggest group of audience is in your house. Um, so that's before the break and now. <laughs> Very, it's getting really interactive now. So. <laughs> Oh. You can prepare yourself after the break. It's perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's our second presentation from Zero and Asset. Uh, it's going to be really interesting. Um, thank you, Christopher. You're yeah, most you, welcome. Christopher. You're most welcome. Thank you. My pleasure.
Yes, thanks to, to for the in, invitation. I I love to to talk to you all and to uh, get to know you. Um, <clears throat> you see, I um, I like uh, di digital uh, or new digital um, um, kinds of interaction, and that's why. I ask you to use uh, AHA slides. It's like Menti, maybe you know Menti. Uh, AHA slides is just the same, um, I, I would say. Um, I have to look, I'd like to see you a little bit more so where I can see most of you, I think. So I, for, for me, it's, uh, uh, it's nice to know who is here with me, and that's why I ask you, you know, what what kind of museum you work in. And talking about uh, um, audiences, I think our I can say our audience in, in the European Hanseatic Museum is uh, we have mostly tourists, tourists um, that come for one day uh, to Lübeck or that came for some days to the Baltic Sea. And uh, that's uh, what, yeah, what defines us. Um, I think it's important to know. So what do we have here? A lot of historical silk museum is very interesting. Doll and toys, I love that. Um, Ethnographic, yes, the carpet museum. So nice to know. Um, I have a, another question. I think what's uh, important to know for me is uh, what if experience you have in visitor research. Because uh, when, when you all uh, have a lot of experience, um, we will talk in uh, 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 in another way to each other, I think. I don't have that much experience in visitor research, but um, to be honest, I will work on this in the next years, I think. So maybe you can uh, join, uh, you can um, answer this question very short, I think. And then we can. Uh, I will talk a little bit about the European Hanseatic Museum, uh, how old we are, uh, what we are, and then I focus on what we do with our audiences. So, does, does it work? Yes. Okay. Um, if you have an, a question about um, the topic, uh, maybe you can write it here on this uh, AHA slides. And if you have a question of understanding, you may raise your head on Zoom and I, I answer it directly. I think that might, that might be a good uh, balance. I have a... Um, um, uh, time for the questions in the end. And as Christopher, I brought in another question if you don't have questions for me. So, yes. yes. Okay, maybe you can, you can answer, no, you, you can not answer what, when I go on. Um, oh, then we have another answer. Okay. You need to refresh it, maybe, or is it refreshing itself? It should be. Don't you? Didn't you see? Um, I don't see my answer. <laughs> oh, what's That's why I'm? I maybe. see five answers now. Maybe I can refresh. The, all these techniques are always have uh, yes the problems. <laughs> the more technique, the more problems we have. Um, 
I think we we have a, a little overview, and uh, I think I go on, and um, yes, talking about audience in the European Hanseatic Museum, and um, I just start. <sighs> um, there should be an, an, uh, a picture. Yes, there it is. It's it. That's our museum. And uh, we have um, the main building. It's a new building here uh, on the street. And we have a um, um, friary. It's, um, 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 yeah, it's, it's part of the uh, heritage of uh, Lübeck. And here are our, um, um, what's it? Uh, the administration is in this building. Um, the museum is it was opened in 2015, uh, so it's only seven years old. Just a few days ago, we, we have our birthday. And uh, to be honest, uh, seven years is not that much for a museum. And um, it's another point, I think the first three years was a very big change of, um, of people who are working there. And the, the team that we are now uh, really has formed, I think, four or five years ago. So um, we we have to. We still are very young, and we not uh, we have not routines for everything a museum maybe should have. Um, we are the biggest uh, museum about the Hanseatic League. Uh, it's not so difficult because there aren't so much. <laughs> There's another one in Bergen in Norway, um, and um, that's that's it, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but there are in, in the in northern Germany, there are a lot of museums that have one room for it, or where it's, it's a, uh, a theme for for some um, uh, tables or something. We are not a small museum. And we are not a big museum. We are a middle museum. <laughs> we have uh, about uh, 80 uh, employees, um, but we it includes all of the people who are working with us. There's a big team of guides who is, uh, um, who, who is in the 80s because we um, don't uh, source anything out. All, all our uh, employees are um, uh, in, in real employees, I'd say. And uh, that's why it sounds so much. Other, uh, um, other museums in Germany that have this size um, or this visitors, um, uh, 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 this, this kind of visitors um, have uh, less employees because they have, uh, the guides are not uh, counting. Um, before Corona, we uh, have about a hundred thousand visitors, and we we want to get that back, but uh, it's a way, I think. Um, we are a museum for tourists, and uh, this is important because we are not a, a museum for the town of Lübeck, and not uh, for the the population of the city. We, we, I think we, we are good for the city because uh, tourists come to us and uh, they spend money in the town. And um, so uh, we focus, so we try to focus on tourists. Um, we didn't get money from the town or the land of uh, Schleswig Holstein or the uh, Germany, the state of Germany, we get our money from a foundation. And uh, therefore, it has a lot of, uh, yes, it's, it's nice to be in this situation, I say, for us. We have a lot of uh, possibilities uh, from this. If you have any questions, just ask, please. So, um, this is about the house. Um, now I 
I thought in the, in the last days, I, we have uh, three days uh, because of Pfingsten, and uh, I thought a lot of uh, about uh, our audience development. And I thought about all the audience we didn't reach. And then I get uh, what, what we do uh, currently. And this is not so, so small, um, to be honest. Um, uh, we we try to get more friendly for families. Our museum is um, yes, it's not so so. We have a lot of text and we have a lot of uh, you see uh, graphics and uh, it's not so good for for children. I say, and we we want to focus on that we want to straighten that and therefore we um have built a digital tour it, and it's a it's a gaming it's a game on a tablet or you can use your your phone your handy and your mobile phone it's in english and um there you can you get uh yes yeah you get um a game where you have to find uh, the son of a scientist who um, ha has developed a time machine and her son gets lost in the Hanseatic time. And so you have to, to um, go through the museum and find this uh, boy. And uh, you have to, to uh, do a lot of exercises and games and uh, what's it, Rätsel, um, some small games. Um, it's the first part is uh, finished, but we can't launch, launch it because we uh, built the museum, part of the museum we built new. And uh, the, the end of the museum is closed by now and uh, the sun is, uh, uh, will be found in, in the end of the museum and that's why we can can start this game. So uh, another point to be more family friendly is that we will uh, implement hands-on stations in the exhibition and this is uh, we will be working on this uh, I think through the year uh, 2023. Um, um, and we will start, I think, with a new, when we, we build one room completely new, and there will be, uh, I think, about two hands-on stations, and then we implement them um, through the whole exhibition. So that's that's the focus. And I, I thought um, I, I lost it a little bit out of room. And one colleague of mine is only working on this and uh, so that's uh, it's a, uh, it's really audience development, I think. Um, next point is um, a really difficult target group, I think. It's uh, the young adults in a historical museum, and we are a special historical museum. We don't have a lot of uh, young adults. And uh, most people are uh, uh, 45 plus and we um, are a little bit crazy. So we said we want uh, younger people in, in our museum and that we tried about um, a special exhibition. We have uh, this um, in, you see in, in the um, in October, we start with this good stuff, textile words from the Hanse era, era to the present. And there, uh, I, we hope um, it's, uh, it's interesting for younger people. Because uh, if you talk about textile, uh, you talk about sustainability. And uh, we always have in our um, special exhibitions, we have a part of what about today? And uh, that's uh, where we want to catch them, <laughs> uh, I think. 
uh, it's a try really. Uh, it might be uh, that it don't work. Um, we need a special uh, social media strategy for that. And uh, uh, one big problem is that our digital manager just um, go and we need a, a new one. And uh, it's, uh, it's a big uh, start uh, for the new p uh, person um, to, to get this uh, to the younger people, I think. But we have cooperations with Friday for Future in Lübeck and we have a cooperation with students and with um, people who can make workshops, uh, upcycling and all these uh, uh, themes we have. So I hope uh, it might, might work. Um, yes, that's what we do. And um, I don't have that much time. I, I go a little bit faster, I think. Um, the digital audience uh, worked very well during Corona. <laughs> we have a lot of experiments. We had a lot of fun um, doing uh, new things. I love to, to, uh, new, to try new things. Um, do we have an, some... Wait. We had a question just yes. now there. Mariam. Mm, yes, hello. Uh, I had a question about this game. Um, you were speaking. Uh, this game uh, has to be with, uh, done with gadgets, yes? If I understand this correctly. Sorry, I, I didn't get it. The question. Uh, the, the first game you were talking about in the museum for children, uh, it uh, has to be done with uh, gadgets, yes? Gadgets. Uh, gadgets, gadgets, like, uh, yes, like an gadgets. iPad. Yes, it's a digital yes. game. You, you need a tablet. We, we, uh, have, we give you a yes. tablet or you use your own mobile uh, device. I have a question. Why uh, did you decide to make the game with uh, these tablets? Is it based on research and the data that the kids prefer to play this kind of game with uh, tablets? Mm -hmm. No, it's not based mm -hmm. on research. It's uh, based on feeling. Because I thought you know, that uh, this kind of game could be fun without uh, these kind of tools uh, easier. Yes. and. Uh, yes, this was my question. Um, Why did you decide yes. it, uh, to make this game this way? I, I am sure that it will be very interesting, but uh, my question is about these gadgets. Um, we have a, a quiz with, um, in, on paper. It's a little book yeah. um, with, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, 20 pages. And mm -hmm. uh, you get it when you come with kids, you, you get it for free. You can yeah. just play through the exhibition. And yeah. um, this digital game um, is for the little bit older uh, yeah. children. I think uh, 11, 12 plus. And yeah. these kids uh, don't have much fun in our exhibition to be honest. And um, sure- Can you try it, to make this kind, this type of game uh, without tablets? Or you haven't tried it yet? Um, well, when the game is about finding something, I guess it could be fun without tablets. Yes, but how- But not for them? Yes, um, one, one sentence should, it worked with, um, with video. And yeah. uh, you get the, uh -huh. the, 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 what you have to do is uh, you learn in, in the videos. And um, I don't know how to, to do it without uh, a device. Uh -huh. And we can discuss later. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I just go, go through uh, the presentation and then we can go back to, to the game. Um, but yeah, I like to talk about it. Um, so back to Corona and uh, the digital audience, we have a, done a lot of things you can see here. Um, and it's, uh, we done lots more things. Um, you can find it, um, maybe here on uh, our, uh, Hansa Museum digital site. Um, I give you in the chat and there you can have a look. There are lots of things we, we did. 
And then uh, Corona ended and oh, we all do like it in you know, or we pretend it ended. And now I find it very difficult to establish all the digital uh, formats and all the ideas. And uh, it's not, I, I, I'm sure it's not that the uh, audience don't want to use that anymore. I think we can find a lot of really great, um, uh, yes, um, <clears throat> What's her name? Um, um, yes. Um, offers. Offers. Yes. Thank you. Uh, we can find great offers. Um, and uh, if I have a digital offer, the audience is all people who speak German or all people who speak English. And this is so, it's, it's so much wider audience uh, that we have to work on this. So first step, I, I, uh, I um, yes, I can realize is to to make our fab we, we um, reorganize our website. Uh, the launch should be in the next three weeks, but that you can find the the offers uh, better. And then we will have a digital team event. Uh, it's a little, it's another digital game. <laughs> Um, with, with, and you can do it um, wherever you are. It's online and we could do it now where we sit on four countries. And uh, this is, uh, I'm very um, curious uh, how it um, works. Um, then I'm trying to uh, Yes, to get the guided tours. I, in the second lockdown, I give guided tours through a 3D scan of an ex a special exhibition. And I have people from Switzerland and from Berlin and uh, everywhere from Germany. And it was, uh, it was such a great um, yeah, tour and uh, experience for me and I think for the people, I hope. And uh, I want to, to get this uh, in a regular base, um, but it's difficult to, to establish in the museum because you need a, a special room, you need uh, computers, you need people who are not afraid to work uh, on this uh, um, format. So that was uh, the audience, uh, the digital audience. Um, adult education and special needs groups. I have no really uh, offer for them. Um, soon we, we have this digital team event. This is for, for adult education, really. Um, I have some role games uh, that uh, adults can do too, um, but um, we don't offer them very, you know, with no pressure, I say. And for the special needs group, we have a great, really, really great team of visitor guides and lots of them can speak in a, in a simple language. They work with people with, um, yes, with, with special needs and um, they are, um, they have a little, um, education how to, to work with people. And so they, Yes, they have a very warm welcome for everyone. And uh, I think the most people, uh, for the most people, this is the, the, the most important thing to be welcome and to, to, yes. So they work with them. You see, they have fun too. Um, I thought about uh, working with, um, um, for example, older people or with um, people who can't see so so good or uh, something like that. But we decided to to don't focus on them in this the last years. Maybe year or the year after. So now I have three minutes for the uh, most important point. So it's always the same. Uh, visitor research. Um, 
in very short, what we've done so far, we have a paper with, I don't know, 20 questions and the people can fill out this for, I don't know, six years. I said, we don't need that anymore. It's always the same. It's, we have a very stable base and uh, there's no change in the answers in, in, in general. And that's why I said uh, we don't need it anymore. Um, for uh, in, in, two, in 20, uh, 1919, we have a large survey with interviews uh, done with an external firm. And on this, we need this to, to um, start the rebuilding of some of our uh, rooms. And um, therefore, we did it, and we and we wanted to know uh, who comes to us and do they like it. And um, what we will do is that we um, will strength. Uh, we, I, I want to implement uh, uh, visitor research in a, in a regular uh, form in our house and. I um, have one, one uh, employee in the sales uh, department and she uh, shall um, work on uh, visitor research regularly. Um, she will learn how to do it and um, she will not do the interviews or something like that. She, she should coordinate all the stuff. And because I think um, without uh, visitor research, we, we can't really do audience development because we, we don't know um, how our audience uh, is, where it is, and how can we develop something we don't know. So it's, it goes together really, uh, yes, like this. Um, so thank you very much. And now we don't have any questions. <laughs> Do you want? <laughs> you you now have time to to uh, for one minute for questions. I'm so sorry. Why it was so long? Thank you so much, Sun. It was really really interesting, and I think. It's so great that you took this so seriously, like the study visit, like you talked about every single topic that we wanted to talk about and you really thought about what you can do. That's truly amazing. And I hope the others um, like use it as a like, yeah, like a possibility to think about who are we reaching? What can we do? What groups are we not reaching? And for what, like, for what reason? If you want, you can sh uh, close the presentation now so uh, we can see each other again. Um, and I also wanted to point out, just to kind of summarize it now, and then we can also still ask questions, um, that the point that you made last with the visitor research, I think, like, there is something in Germany going on, which is like a non-visitor uh, research, like focusing on people that are actually not going. And that's why I think it's so interesting that you decided not to ask the people that are going and maybe try to focus who are who you're not reaching. So I think that's very, very important topic when you talk about audiences. So thank you so much. Yes, one point uh, you, you may have seen the last picture. Um, we are... Uh... <coughs> forming another network. We, we love networks, I think. Um, <laughs> and, um, this is about uh, visitor uh, searching in, in Germany and museums. And it will, uh, will form in, in August, end of August in this year. And then we have a Verein, an association about it. And uh, I guess we will be uh, funding uh, this um, network yes so if you are interesting just write me we have a twitter account uh, running uh, and we working on a, a, a web present uh, but we haven't formed so it's very difficult to be uh, to, to have your own site thank you any any questions do we have time for one two questions yeah, of course or... i mean if you have something to share and then we go to the into the museum
you yeah. always have a question, as she said. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but there's a million, but I, I'm just picking one now. <clears throat> Is um, this, this whole new structure that you've adopted about visitor research, is that uh, like something that the founding, the, the, your funding institution, that is what I want to say, is asking you to do? So are the ones who are giving you my, I don't know, are you community uh, owned or um, at a communal level? Or? No, 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 it's a private foundation. Oh yeah, it's a GGMBH, no? Yeah, yes. um, okay. So, but, but you still get uh, public funding, I guess. No. You don't get any public funding? No, only from this foundation. Uh -huh. Sometimes when we have a special exhibition, we, we ask BKM or someone, but okay. uh, the normal, uh, 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 our everyday life is <laughs> without uh, um, uh, funding from the state. Uh, that, but the question still applies. Does your funder, yes. even if it's um, the foundation, do it, they it ask was, you It to was do an, a co that uh, comes together. I said to my director uh, that I want to do it regularly and that I want to have this person with, I don't know, 15 hours a week or something uh, to work on this. And I think in the same month, the foundation said, maybe you do something about it. So <laughs> we, 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 it, it was in the air, you say, in Germany. Um, so it's, it's very important and we are late on it, but um, we, we do our best. Okay, thanks. I, th I just think it's really interesting to see that sometimes a bit of push from the outside or the, the funding institution helps the museum to do yes. the first step and then they sure. realize oh we, that we is have, actually a good yes. point and helps us in in the development of, of the audience. We, we have this point uh in in this um sustainable uh, to work sustainability mm -hmm. and we we all want to do it but it needs the foundation to to say to us do it and we want to do it we want you to do it right uh, that we really can start working on it because it's such a big uh, theme that it would uh, um, it will take years to implement it in the house. And therefore we need the foundation to say, go that way. Yeah, thank you. Yes, so I thank you for Yes, uh, listening. And if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, find me on our homepage or uh, under team and go come back to me. Um, I don't know how, how long I can stay because I have to, to catch a train to Lübeck today. Uh, maybe uh, 20 more minutes and then I, I think I have to go. Thank you for being here. Thanks so much. Perfect. I think there was two very good examples for audiences. It was very nice, wasn't it? Um, and since you couldn't be here, and neither in Berlin nor in Germany, uh, we decided to offer you still like a museum, like a museum tour. Um, so we are going to use one of this digital office that we were talking about, actually. And we are going to use this 360? 390? Oh, I'm confused. 60, 360 degrees panorama museum tour and you will have the chance to go yourself but to get like a little introduction I invited uh, like a good friend of mine Anna she uh, just came in um, she is an art historian and focused on uh, modern and contemporary art so after talking about regional museums and Hanseatic museums now we go to art again and uh, just to meet the cliche i guess um but it's a very nice tour she was a event manager for many years and also art mediator and i heard a lot of guided tours from her so uh, i hope you will enjoy this little introduction she's currently a trainee at another museum but uh, she's also a freelance art historian so she's the perfect person to guide us through so say hello you can say hello and maybe share your screen i need to get your screen sharing first and then she will guide us through yeah so hello all together good evening could you say evening yeah i don't know 
Um, yeah, thank you very much for having me. And uh, yeah, it's nice, nice to meet you, uh, to meet all of you. I hope you can hear me and understand me well. I'm, yeah, is that is that okay? <laughs> because I did a test today in the early morning, but you never know. It depends a little bit on the on the internet connection. So I will try to share my uh, my screen. I can. <clears throat> Okay, now I can see you here and can my can see my screen here. Can you see my screen? Is everything yes. all right? Perfect. Then you can see the website of the Museum Ludwig already. And here under Museum, we will find the digital offer of the Museum Ludwig. You can here find some information about the permanent collection at the Museum Ludwig, also a collection online where you can do a research of the highlights of the museum, find some short texts about the highlights, but we will, uh, we will go into the panoramic tour uh, soon. But first of all, be before we start with the, with the tour, I just want to introduce you shortly into the collection of the museum in, in total. So um, maybe you might know that besides of the Museum Ludwig in Cologne, which is one of the, the largest collections, many more museums in Europe and all around the world um, earn parts of the collection of Peter and Irene Ludwig. And so they have their name in it as well. For example, the Moomorg Museum for Modern Art in Vienna, the Museum Ludwig in Budapest, St. Petersburg or Peking. And Peter and Irone Ludwig focused um, especially on art of the 21st century and are uh, very popular, especially for their, for their collection of pop art we will see soon during the panoramic tour. Um, Peter and Irene Ludwig gave their collection of modern and contemporary art to the city of Cologne uh, under the condition that there was a built a new museum, so for their art the Museum Ludwig that we have here today. And uh, that was new built during uh, 1976 and 1978. So we can visit the collection in the Museum Ludwig from uh, 1978. So, and now we will start our digital tour, our 360 degrees tour that starts in the collection of the pop art. So will do I. And yeah, the, as I already said, the pop art collection of the Museum Ludwig is very, very famous because it's the most extensive um, collection of pop art outside of America. We always, we always say that, that Peter and Jeroen Ludwig were the first collectors that brought actually the pop art to Germany and made it popular um, here in, in, in Europe. So they they bought the artworks pretty cheap from the artists, from the studios, from the galleries in America. And here in Germany, we learned what is pop art actually from, from Ludwigs, you can say. You can see here in the in that big exhibition space, which is only one space of many more in that museum. And we see the perspective from when we entered uh, the room. And you can actually see that the Museum Ludwig decided to hang the artworks in the so-called Petersburger hanging that refers to the overwhelming uh, world of advertising, film posters uh, and multimedia that uh, the motives of the pop art represents. And uh, yeah, we will find absolutely masterpieces and highlights of artists like Andy Warhol, you can see here in the Brillo boxes, or the double L, which we can change the perspective um, uh, later. Here is a, a do-it-yourself um, painting. If we turn around a little bit, we can see here, for example, a sunbather by the British pop artist uh, David Hockney or a um, hyper-realistic sculpture by Dune Hansen. And uh, yeah, I will change the perspective so you can see the, the, the exhibition space from, from the other side. Maybe it lasts a little bit, yeah. But here we are a little bit closer to, to um, Roy Lichtenstein paintings. And we can see here the, the Cathedral of Rouen that refers to the um, Impressionist painting by um, Claude Monet, who painted the Cathedral of Rouen in different, um, during different uh, times of the day, but also the very popular painting of the Mimebi. 
um, you can see that you can turn around in 360 degrees. That makes sense. Uh, we can see here some more uh, masterpieces by Klaas Oldenburg, by Tom Wesselmann, all again from, from uh, Roy Lichtenstein. And you can see if you later turn around and move through the exhibition spaces, you will find more, uh, more information about um, single artworks, but also the texts behind this sign. If you go on the sign, you will find more information about the artworks and maybe you can read them on your own uh, a little later. Yeah, other artists in the collection of the pop art are, for example, James Rosenquist, Robert Rauschenberg, Jasper Jones, um, yeah, and so many more. So it's a very, very popular collection of pop art and it's actually extended in the other rooms, but the Museum Ludwig decided just to want to show us one of those. Another very special part of the collection of the Museum Ludwig is the collection of uh, Pablo Picasso's works. I'd like to start from this perspective because then we can see the whole exhibition space. Um, yeah, what is so special in this exhibit in this collection? Uh, many visitors um, do not know that um, the collection of Pablo Picasso's works in the Museum Ludwig is the third largest uh, collection of uh, Pablo Picasso after Paris and Barcelona. That's due to the fact that um, Peter Ludwig wrote his PhD thesis about Pablo Picasso and he started collecting his works from, from all phases of, of his career. And today we have 900 works of Picasso. Um, of course, not only the large format paintings, but also sculptures, drawings, ready makes and ceramics. And we are very proud of this head of Dora Ma, for example, or the woman uh, with an artichoke. Um, and of course, also we have uh, this sculpture of a, a woman with a baby carriage, which is interesting because it's an object uh, or it's a sculpture made from found objects. And what is special is that there are two um, two casts from that sculpture, additionally painted, uh, which are in, in different museums, and you can't identify anymore the, the, um, the details of the sculpture. And when we go closer, and maybe we can, we can recognize that the baby carriage was found on a beach by Picasso, so that's the only thing in that sculpture that can be identified as the original object. Uh, and uh, but <clears throat> the head of the baby, for example, is a vase, and its arms and legs uh, are clay handles from vessels. Uh, in the mother figure, uh, Pablo Picasso transforms an ornamented hop plate for the for the body and for the blues. And he uses, I don't know if you can see that from this perspective very well, but you can use this, this info sign later to have a closer look to the, to the details, uh, cake tins for the breasts. So, and this is a very special sculpture by Picasso, for example. On this side, we see uh, two big paintings from, uh, by Fernand Léger. And we have, uh, yeah, a, um, a short look into another part of the exhibition. You can see um, that here in this area, the uh, abstract expressionists start, and that's where we ha we like to go now. <clears throat> and this is the oldest part of the Museum Ludwig, and is not part of the Ludwig collection, but part of the Haubrich collection with paintings by German expressionists and other modernist artists who were persecuted during the Second World War and deemed generate. Josef Haubrich, a Cologne advocate, was able to hide his collection in the cellar of his house, which was 
very, very special because he was married to a Jewish woman and his home was um, was searched several times by by German soldiers, so Nazis, but it was able, he was able to hide the artworks and gave them to the city of Cologne right after the Second World War. So the city of Cologne is very, very proud and happy that we can show these artworks now that, as you might know, um, yeah, were, were destroyed during the, during the Second World War or uh, got lost. And yeah, we have here in this part of the collection masterpieces by artists like Ernst Ludwig Kirchner, Otto Müller, Max Beckmann, Marc Chagall, Erich Heckel, Karl schmidt rottluff August Macke, Otto Dix und, and Paula Modersohn Becker. And speaking of Ernst Ludwig Kirchner and Karl schmidt rottluff this is, for example, a painting that shows the four founding members of the Expressionist Artists Group, The Bridge, which is very popular in Germany for the German Expressionists. Um, yeah, and there, there are Ernst Ludwig Kirchner, Otto Müller, Karl schmidt rottluff and Erich Heckel. And only seven years after formulating their manifest that we probably can see here in that painting, the group split up. And the painting is based on a reunion that took place uh, some years later uh, and yeah it probably shows a situation where Ernst Ludwig Kirchner who's probably this person tries to convince the other members of the bridge um, yeah of their original ideas because we can see that here with his hand he shows on the manifest but this uh, might be Otto Müller and he is very he's he's not interested anymore so this this um, this painting uh, shows a lot about the relationship of these uh, artists and is very, very important for the collection of this, this part of the Museum Ludwig. Yeah, let me have a look at the time. Maybe I will only show you um, last room, not talking too much about the painting we found, that we find there. Um, the Museum Ludwig earns a large collection of co photography as well. Uh, the Russian constructivism and abstract abstract expressionism, so Jackson Pollock, for example. But um, the team of the Museum Ludwig decided to um, yeah, to involve that room, that exhibition space, into the um, into the three hundred sixty degrees panoramic tour because it's the most um, yeah, it's an it's a favorite art uh, artwork by the audience. So many visitors come to see that Salvador Dali. It's the um, the station of Papignon a painting, which shows a conclusion of his whole life. He he said himself. Yeah, and uh, maybe if you have time later, you can have a little look behind this uh, this further information to to get an impression of what this painting shows us and of what the painting tells us. But for the moment, I think um, this this is enough for the first impression of the museum. Uh, please, uh, yeah, go around, uh, see, see yourself what is what is waiting for you and. Yeah, as I as I said, here is another option to find more uh, more highlands of the collection. You can see some more pictures, some more images of of the exhibition spaces, and get an impression of the, what the museum uh, shows us. Uh, speaking of Corona, I think the idea for the three hundred sixty degrees um, uh, tour. Um, yeah, came before Corona, so they they planned the tour, which is a very extensive uh, process to 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 make the photos, to bring all the information about the the artworks together, um, also in two languages. That's uh, yeah, so it need, needs a lot of time, and I think they started before Corona and then published the tour during the first. Uh, lockdown and um, maybe in in May or something I, I don't really know but but just to let you know that it was not because of corona it has uh, already started um, before do you have any questions on the 
on the tour, on the collection, something I can tell you before you try your own and, and uh, walk around on your own. Oh, thank you so much, Anna, for introducing us. Thank you for making time. You're currently making an exhibition. So I really appreciate it that you introduce us. Um, yeah, and you can, as Anna said already, you can go around yourself. I posted the two links inside already. And um, yeah, just to read the information. It's very special, actually. It wasn't that easy to, um, I see your question, my my Yulene. Yeah. Do you want to quickly ask it? Yeah, Anna. Thank you very much. It's so lovely to see. And I was wondering, are there many uh, people using this facility already? Are you are you glad with the with the receipt of the of the tool? Unfortunately, I, ca I can't say anything about that because I'm not not working anymore in the team of the museum Ludwig, but only in the in the in the in the guide team. So I do the, the guided tours through the museum, but I'm not uh, not working anymore for them because so so, so that that's the reason why I can't send, can can't say anything about that. But in my opinion, I had the feeling that uh, the digital offer in total um, was very popular during the lockdown. So the audience loved to to visit the the digital <coughs> tours, the digital exhibitions. The museum did a lot of of tools also on Instagram with photos, with videos, with texts, and um, yeah, and we 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 made the the, um, the experience that that they were very thankful for that offer. So I I have the feeling that it is a good um, a good option to to get an impression of the museum while you are not able to visit it. Do you mind sharing, like, uh, stop sharing your screen, yes. Anna? Thank you. Okay. So if there is no other questions, um, I'd like to say thank you <laughs> again um, to Anna and also to you that you joined uh, this study visit, this digital study visit, and I hope you can still use uh, and still go in the museum uh, to Ludwig okay. because it is actually really good uh, 360 degrees like as you saw in Anna's presentation you can zoom and there's lots of information and it's also not that it's quite rare I would say I know it's super sad but um, we don't have as many English offers to be honest so it's really nice that we have this really great collection and which is truly amazing for you to look at and yeah you have the links uh, I think we can stop recording now and uh, I will say thank you for participating like being participants today. I know